Hi, welcome, good afternoon. It's Wednesday. I'm at the top of the house. We've just had a storm pass over. So the skies went really, really dark grey, very dim. And it's getting really bright over this way, which is why I've had to sort of close this blind a bit because it's just too bright. But it's really dark over that way, so yeah, beautiful. Love a good storm, but I don't think we need any more rain at the moment. It is turning out to be a really changeable autumn, isn't it? For most people, I think. It still gets quite chilly. It's nice up here. I've got the heating on low, um, but it's quite pleasant up here. In fact, I think I've said it before, it's the most insulated room of the house. So it's, it's quite nice, stays a nice even temperature, which is lovely. So this afternoon, folks, I am in repair mode. I've got three pairs of Paul's trousers that all need to be taken up because they're far too long for him. So we've done a bit of measuring up and I'm going to be doing a, what's it called? I'm going to be doing a hem, but I'm going to be retaining the bottom part of the trousers. So I've had a little research on YouTube and I know the technique. Basically, you just turn them right side. You just turn them up to where you need them. You sew along the very edge where the, where the turn up is, the original turn up. And then you basically flip them the other way and cut off the excess. It's easy, easy peasy. So I'm gonna be doing that shortly. I mean, I can show you how to do it if you want, um, but there's so many tutorials already on YouTube. There's absolutely no point in me doing a tutorial. What I do have to do, however, on this pair is remove the old Wonder Web, which I must have done a turn up job on these a while ago. And it's kind of left quite a lot of the glue behind from the Wonder Web, which has, has long since failed and, and kind of been removed. So I need to do that, which just involves scraping off the old glue usually with a fingernail. So I'll have to work around that. But the same thing, turn ups, I've already measured them. And then this pair is a more sort of posh trouser with a really good crease in the front. So I have to be careful, but I know exactly what to do with these. The turn up that's existing on there has already failed. So it's going to be double that that's easy peasy, it's going to be a blind hem, twice the size of the original hem. So yeah, that's what I'm up to this afternoon. Repairs. I was just in the mood. You know when the mood takes you and you think, hmm, I'm going to get Janome out and I'm going to sew. I just felt like it. Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to push this back. <coughs> Pardon me. It's that time of year, isn't it, where everybody seems to be getting these weird little colds and you kind of wonder where they've come from because we've not had any contact with people and the contact that we have had has been with masks and I've been in contact with people who have not had COVID and, you know, some have been tested because I work with clinicians so I, I've not come into contact with anybody with colds or COVID or virus at all. I think we get affected by the changes in temperature and I think our bodies kick out an immune response because Paul and I have both had these sort of nasally, slightly coffee, strange little colds. You don't feel particularly bad but you might feel worse in the morning. You sort of wake up snotty. It's weird, isn't it? So I think you, it makes you wonder. All those times 
I thought I'm getting a cold, I've got a cold, I feel dreadful. And actually it didn't feel that bad, it was just a bit of a change of season sniffle. Do you know what I mean? I think you can convince yourself that you're really ill as well. I mean, I don't want to run a marathon around the block. I didn't mean that. Did I mean that? I don't know what I mean now. I've got no idea. So, Janome is here. She's on and ready. What I've done with these posh trousers, these Marks and Spencer's polyester trousers, they're not that posh. What I've done is I've ironed them to provide a crease. So that's the original hem there. This will be the new hem. That's how much they need to be taken up. So what I will do is I will get rid of this piece of material. I will cut that. I will finish the edge with an overcast. I've chosen a really inky blue cotton because they're, they're very dark blue. I'll do an overcast and then I'll do a blind hem to finally hem them. Sorry, I was just looking at the changing, changing light out there. It's still grey, but it's gone slightly lighter. So yeah, that's what I will do. So I need to get a bobbin wound, my favourite bit, and get, get sewing. Yeah, lovely. to remove this purple cotton. That's the last time I did a sewing project. And I videoed myself, I think. Did I? What was I doing? Oh, lavender bags, wasn't I? Yeah, of course. Hello? There was a beeping noise. Oh, maybe it was the computer turning itself off. Oh, that was odd. Now, I'm struggling with the light here. It looks bright on there, but I can't see a thing. I really can't. So let me sort this out and then I'll see you back here for sewing and cutting. Oh, lovely. Hi. I've had to put the big light on because it's so dim. Right, so cutting. This should be fairly easy. I'm just going to cut this bit off here and I'm going to follow this crease. Simple as that. No going back now. <laughs> Done. Right, so I've cut the excess off. So now I need to finish this edge so it doesn't fray. And I'm going to use the overcasting function on the machine basically, as I've said before, just finishes the edge off. It, it, you know, sort of wraps the material slightly in stitching to prevent it from fraying. So that's what I'm going to do. So I need to remove this. Hi, it's Thursday morning now. I had to stop work yesterday because it was getting dark. I hate working under all electric lights because frankly my eyesight is terrible. Um, and it was getting later, it was time to eat. I had a Zoom meeting planned with, with the family so I had to stop. So I thought I'll just continue on Thursday morning. It's another wet day. It's really, really wet, dank, grey and cool. Horrible, you can probably hear the rain. Yeah. So what I want to do this morning is crack on getting this blind hem done on Paul's trousers. And I wanted to 
just take this opportunity to show you what blind hemming is. I'm not an expert sewer, I'm not an expert sewing machine user, I'm quite new to this game, so I have to take things step by step and take things slowly. Um, so let's have a closer look at what I mean about blind hemming. I want you to imagine that this is the end of the trouser leg and it's inside out and this is the raw edge that we finished off. So to do a hem obviously what we would do is turn up and then we'd stitch. And I think if you're doing it by hand you'd be catching little bits of the fabric so it doesn't show through on the other side. If we do that with a machine it is going to show through. So in order to do a blind hem we're going to fold again leaving a small allowance of about half a centimetre here. And what the machine is going to do it's going to sew along this allowance but occasionally it's going to move across, the needle's going to move across and catch the edge of this fold here. If I show you with a pen, the needle's going to sew along here and then it's going to jump and sew there and then continue to sew along here and then jump again. So on and so forth. That's how it works. And the particular stitch I'm using is a stitch which is designed to do that. In order to do this I'm using the blind hemming foot which has an adjustable fabric guide and that fabric guide sits against this fold. So as we're sewing the material moves along that guide to ensure that we're sewing in the right place. It's adjustable as well so you can make small adjustments to ensure that it is sewing in the correct place. I'm going to attempt to show you what happens to the needle and do excuse my slightly dusty machine. I haven't given it a good old clean recently so naughty me. So I don't know whether you can see but the needle's going to sew along and it's sewing along this exposed raw edge here. I was going to do a few stitches. And then it jumps. Did you see that? It jumps over. And it catches the edge of that fold and then it returns back. That's basically how it works. So I hope you can see where the machine has sewn along and then caught the edge of that fold intermittently. Clever isn't it? So now what we do is we turn it out and you can see where it's caught it. So now what we need to do is press this really, really well and give it a gentle pull. So once that's pressed, these stitches won't really be visible. So these are finished now. That's the finished hem. And you can just see where the stitches show through on the right side. This has been given a good press. It's not perfect, to be honest, but You've got to bear in mind that nobody really ever goes down on the floor and looks at your trouser hem. So I think that's not too bad for a first attempt at doing a pair of polyester trousers that actually are quite hard to sew because the material does rock up as you're sewing. But it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. It'll do. I mean, these are a pair of trousers that Paul hardly ever wears. 
but if he needs to, he can now wear them. So that's good. I'm pleased with that. I'm glad that pair's done. That was a bit fiddly. This pair should be quite easy to do. All I've done is turn them up to where they need to be altered. And then I'm going to sew all the way around the edge of the turn up. Then I'm going to turn them inside out, check the length is okay, and then remove the excess fabric and then finish that off. So that's an easy job, I think. I said that about the other one. So I've been at it most of the day, actually. What time is it now? Alexa, what's the time? It's 4.15pm. 4.15. We had a lunch break, obviously, but I've done three pairs. Just finished these. New hem. Retaining the old hem. All done. And another one exactly the same as that. A new hem, retaining the original bottom bit there. So what else has been happening? Um, not an awful lot really. We've not been anywhere this week yet, although we're going out tomorrow. Um, again, it's grey and windy and wet. It's a little bit brighter than it was, but it's coming up to sunset now, so if the, there is a sunset, I will show you on Facebook. But that's it from me. I just thought I'd share that with you, and I'll see you very soon. I'll see you on Sunday for Sunday Chat. Take care. Bye for now.